there's an article called the very best of cheap trick based on the album <laughs> <laughs> cheap trick the i don't know 1980s band something like that yeah. something like that um but this is about uh, the statistical trick of excluding partially vaccinated people from assessment of from the assessment of vaccine efficacy so as to juke the stats, uh, which guarantees a conclusion of efficacy. We talked about this um, back in live stream 179 on June 21st of this year in our episode Science Strong and Fragile. And it's an analysis um, that we talked about then done by these two guys, Martin Neal, a professor of computer science and statistics, and Norman Fenton, whom you have had on Dark Horse, a uh, professor of risk information management. Both of them are in the School of Electronic and Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at Queen Mary University of London. And uh, they have one of their, one of, actually, you've got that on the screen there, Zach, um, an early paragraph in this piece. You can scroll down if you want, um, but I'm just looking at it on my screen. The cheap trick is simple. Categorize those who are vaccinated as unvaccinated up until some arbitrarily defined time period after vaccination takes place. The time period might be 7, 14, or 21 days. The supposed justification for this practice being that the benefits of the vaccine do not accrue until it has had time to kick in. And before it becomes effective on day seven, 14 or whatever, the recipient is considered to be unvaccinated. So these authors, Neil and Fenton, have put together what Zach is showing on the screen, this fantastic new compendium, uh, which uh, apparently you asked them, as we see on screen here, recently the Dark Horse podcast covered the issue. And shortly after, Brett Weinstein asked me if there was a comprehensive list of studies that had deliberately committed this cheap trick. So they've put together this article, which is fantastic. Um, they say, our first attempt to provide such a list, it contains a mix of observational and other studies that have employed the cheap trick when assessing vaccine effectiveness for either infection, hospitalization, or death. Uh, note that as well as numerous and varying time periods that the trick might be employed, there are four ways in which this kind of selection bias might take place. Miscategorized. The vaccinated or categorized as un the vaccinated or categorized as unvaccinated or twice vaccinated is categorized as single vaccinated, etc. Unverified. Those who are vaccinated but cannot be verified as such are categorized as unvaccinated. Excluded. Those who are vaccinated but are infected before 14 days or whatever are allocated to neither the unvaccinated nor vaccinated categories but are instead simply removed from the analysis. And undefined. The definitions of vaccinated and unvaccinated are left intentionally undefined. Uh, and that exclusion has, as that exclusion version of what they're calling the cheap trick has tended to be overlooked. Uh, so, you, we're not going to go through all of these, but it's a, it's a remarkable list. And if you want to just scroll um, scroll quickly through these, we've got a New England Journal of Medicine, uh, British uh, BMC is British. British uh, I, don't I don't remember what BMC. I don't remember what BMC is. Uh, infection diseases, JAMA, uh, Lancet, Open Forum Infections, uh, the Journal of Vaccine again, Lancet. Uh, and for each of these, they specify, hold on, just slow down a second. So there's BMJ, British Medical Journal and, and Nature. Uh, and, and here we have Neil and Fenton um, saying, uh, with regard to each of these, what it is that the cheap trick that was clearly deployed in the study was. New England Journal of Medicine, Nature, Lancet, Vaccines, uh, and, and on and on and on and on and on. We've got the CDC's official definition. We've got an official report from uh, various uh, public health authorities, more with JAMA, New England Journal of Medicine, Nature, Lancet. Wow. Those are some, and those are major journals. These are major. And of course they're major journals because it is, it is those papers and the fact that there's more than one of them, and in fact many of them, that have been the basis for the argument um, that these vaccines are not just safe and effective, but it is your moral obligation to take them because they are just that freaking good. And look at all the carn artistry. Look at it. So a reminder for people who maybe didn't see our initial analysis, the degree to which this simple misfiling of people or ushering them out of the data set entirely when they show up in an inconvenient place can create an impression of overwhelming efficiency. I think if the delay was two weeks, you get an impression of efficacy at 85% or was 83%, something like that. Something it's like that. an impressive capability. And it can do this for something that has no effect whatsoever. 
right? Right. If we decided that tapping your nose three times was the treatment, and then we decided it took two weeks to take a full effect, and then we ran the study, you would find 80 whatever uh, percent effectiveness based on simply this categorization scheme. So here's what I want people to get from this. When somebody speaks about peer review as if peer review guarantees a certain level of quality, what in the earthly fuck are they talking about? (laughs) If it didn't catch this list of people making a simple error that creates a statistical artifact that leads you to believe an ineffective drug is highly effective, if they didn't catch that, what did they catch? Nothing. Just couldn't COVID. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Ultimately, they caught COVID. We know that. But for God's sake, this is, it's not one study that made an error. No. Right? It, it is a... Well, l- I mean, and it it reveals almost certainly that it's not an error. Right. That's it. But right. the point is, you would imagine... So at what level does your system have to be broken that these things are repeatedly submitted? The journal goes through some very serious process called oh, peer review, so sending it out to people who are expert and who scrutinize it because that is their scientific duty who didn't fucking catch this. Mm-hmm. Like, there is no peer review, right? The point is peer review is a, uh, it is it is exactly like the rating agencies that stamped the garbage um, uh, financial instruments that contained all of the bad uh, mortgages during the subprime crisis as AAA, right? It's exactly that bullshit. It is. It's and, exactly that. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyway, like seriously, every time you hear the word peer review, think about this list of papers in which this insane error that creates a totally fictional impression of efficacy just passed through peer review and nobody noticed, Mm -hmm. right? There is no peer review. That is an incredibly long and diverse list of all of the top publications. That's not, it's not like... Yeah, and not, like, I think not every single one of those is peer reviewed, but the list that have been right. ostensibly... There are some agencies, like the CDC's definitions right. uh, and such. And there's a list. preprint in there. But yep. but here's the question. Okay, let's say that um, Martin Neal and Norman Fenton are just that good, and this mathematical uh, trick, which is obvious in retrospect at the very least... But it was um, utterly invisible to everyone until these awesome uh, risk analysts and professors uh, realized the problem. Yes. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start a clock today. I think they've just published this list in the last week. We'll start it at their publication, mm. uh, and we'll see how long it takes for all of the papers that made this mistake <laughs> to be retracted or corrected. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Don't hold your breath. I'm betting the earth ends first. <laughs> That's what I'm betting. Okay, so that clock is now going. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. Doomsday clock. The doomsday clock. (laughs) Right.